Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to elaborate on this session about our focus points. And so we, we talked about in a previous session about what our focus points are um, and, and how we do those, give those to our guys every Monday night. And those are specific fundamentals that we're going to emphasize during the course of a game week, okay? Again, the whole mindset of those focus points is to get your kids focused on getting better week to week, not focusing on the opponent. And I think that's how teams throughout the course of year get better or get worse. I think when you start just thinking about the opponent, thinking about game day, game day, I think that's when you start to get worse because you let the fundamentals, the details, and the techniques start to slip. And so we want to make sure our guys are constantly focused on things that we got to get better at in our room. And so now what we're going to do in this session is we're going to take those focus points, okay, and now we're going to show how we apply them into drill work and into game day, okay? So each week there's going to be a, a – it could now this could be – the whole bank of your indie drills are wide open. You got to, I, I like to categorize our indie drills. I do a deal where I've got each uh, drill, okay, labeled by category. So it might be a catching drill, a blocking drill, a hard angle cut drill, okay. Categorize them so that when these focus points come up, you can say, all right, what would be a great drill to address this fundamental flaw that we're having, okay. So we're going to take you through some of those. I'm not going to take you through every indie drill that we do, but just some that we've utilized in the past to address certain focus points for our guys during the course of the week, okay? So we're gonna just, again, what we're trying to accomplish is daily development, okay? We're trying to accomplish daily development. We, we tell our guys all the time, we wanna be one and always day and get better on a daily basis, okay? If you do that, if, we, if you think about bringing a receiver in and you bring him into your program and you get him better one day at a time, just a little bit better each day, that's 365 days in a year, that kid has gotten a ton better over the course of a year, and you've developed him, okay, to become a better receiver, all right? So we're going to look at this, okay, starting out, all right, just a couple of drills that we've done in the past, okay, to, and I'm going to kind of explain, give a little background on each drill of why um, we decided to utilize that drill for a focus point, okay, what we were trying to accomplish. So this first one is just a simple drill that we call M drill, okay? So this M drill right here is going to emphasize explosion out of our breaks. Okay, we want to create explosion at the top of our route and out of our breaks. I didn't think we were doing a good job of that the previous week. So we wanted to emphasize how fast, how violent, how explosive could we be out of our breaks. So this drill is designed we don't want the, we didn't want our guys to be comfortable. Okay, this is not like 45 degree cone drill if you watched some of our previous sessions where you know we're kind of going slower through it, we're sticking, flashing the head nod. This one, we are pushing to that cone, and I'm trying to get those guys. I want them, I don't want them to slow down. I tell them it's okay in this drill to fail. Okay, you can slip fall, I don't care. I want you going full speed to that cone and sticking and getting out, opening that hip and eliminating the chops, okay, and being explosive out of the break. So I didn't feel like the week before we were good at that. So I wanted to emphasize that this week. So you can see right here, uh, my man up top already went through, but you can see, look at Jordan, he's pushing through it. Okay, he's a guy that, again, great route runner, takes a lot of choppy steps to the top of his route. So I wanted him to feel free in this drill. Don't do that. You got the freedom, don't even do it. If you fall, you slip, I don't care. You don't, don't, don't take choppies. Okay, just run. Just run and stick, run and stick. Catch tight turn vertical. Okay, good job right there. Okay, I, I, I told her I want them to go as fast as possible in this drill. Okay, so that they get uncomfortable. Because you never, it's, it's just like, you know, riding a bike. You know, you, you're not going to get good at riding a bike unless you ride a bike. You got to practice it, then you got to ride a bike and get good at it, right? It's just, it's just like anything in life. You're not going to get good at it unless you, unless you work at it and you do it. So if we're going to get better at being full speed out of our cuts, then we got to run, we got to drill being full speed out of our cuts. We got to actually run full speed and get out of our cut, no matter if we fail at it. So I told our guys, don't worry about this drill, okay? If you slip fall, don't worry about that. You just worry about okay going as fast as you can and getting uncomfortable okay in these drills like right here my man on top I you know I, I preach I know what he's trying to do he's trying to stick and open and reach and open that hip but I wanted to go fast I wanted to blaze through this thing and get really uncomfortable that's a good good job here by two okay stick get out get uncomfortable catch tight turn vertical you ought to mess up in this drill it's okay if you mess up in this drill okay good job push it push 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 stick get out. Stick, get out. Good. So again, to me right there, speed it up, speed it up, speed it up. Okay. We're still emphasizing good technique. Don't get me wrong. 
That's a good job of it. Like that's a that's a danger drill by this kid. Okay, pushing vertical, stick. He even flashes the head knob right there. Boom, boom. Okay, gets out, tight turn vertical. Again, we're, don't get me wrong. We're not just telling our guys to run through this drill fast. We're not talking. You know, we're we're, we're not emphasizing technique or anything. We're emphasizing technique. We still want them to stick tips on, uh, uh, over their toes. We want sticking underneath the framework of the body. Okay, if they can flash the head knob opposite, great. If they can do that at that speed, great. Okay, I want them to do that. All right, so we're still working good technique, but the emphasis is go as fast as you can. Good. Go as fast as you can and see if you can get out of that break. Okay, explosion out of my cuts. Okay, while well, going full speed. Okay, pretty good job right there. Okay, now next drill. Okay, we want to emphasize. Okay, in this drill, okay, two things we wanted to get accomplished. Okay, we talk about it all the time in, in, the, in the receiver spot. Okay, in, in our receiver room, we're trying to create magic feet and magic hands. Okay, we're trying to create two things magic feet, magic hands. We say that all the time. In this drill, we're trying to create magic feet. Okay, so all we were working on, okay, was great foot quickness with this three cone drill. Okay, I wanted to emphasize having quick feet, all right, at the top of our route, getting out. Okay, not the choppies, but I wanted to emphasize us pushing vertical, having quick feet to get out of our route, okay, being violent, even creating double move opportunities, all right. Then I wanted to emphasize hard angle cuts, okay. I felt like we were, we, we, we weren't getting to the top of our route and being violent with our sticks, and we weren't, uh, stick, especially our underneath cuts, okay, like our slants, things like that. I didn't feel like we were being quick, okay, and sticking those things and getting out of our breaks, and then I didn't feel like we were hard angle cutting stuff. So I wanted to combine those two things, so the three cone drill came into play. So we were working magic feet, okay, again, working on foot quickness, okay, working on foot quickness. I felt like we were we weren't as, as, as split a foot on film, okay, the previous week as we have been. So I wanted to see these guys, I wanted to see, okay, quick feet, quick feet. So if we're around these cones, I give them, an, again, talk about details of the drill, I'll tell them we're going to go right to left starting out, okay, left to right, or right to left, however we start, okay. So we're starting out right to left, but I'll always give them a command on that, okay. And then I'll tell them, okay, which way we're breaking. Great job, okay. He's got quick feet, okay. And again, the, 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 the next part of the drill that, that we're talking about emphasizes not only the quick feet, but the pad leverage, okay, as we made our breaks, okay. As we were going around those cones, we wanted low pad leverage, okay. So we're talking about low pads at the top of the route, magic feet, quick feet, okay, at the, at the top of our route, all right. And then we're talking about hard angle cuts, okay, right here on this last cone. Great job by Trevor right here. Look at that. That is the almost the near perfect clip, okay, of flashing the head knot opposite. Okay, he's flashing the head knot opposite. He's sticking that, that toe within, within the framework of his body. Boom, comes out flat to negative. That's a dang good drill right there. We got better right there. Okay, good. This is the, Now, this is what I'm looking for, man. This is a 6'3 kid, Neil McLaurin, really good player. Was, was not the fastest footed guy, but he look at him work at it. He knew that this drill was, was a drill that, that, that could get him better because, again, he, he it was working on a weakness okay, that he had. And not being just the, the fastest footage, but again, he's working at it right there, and it, he got better throughout the course of the year. Good flash, good job working flat to negative. That's a really good job. Okay, good. Great job by DeMichael. Fast feet, okay, pumping those arms, keeping low pad leverage. He's not out of control, okay? Just don't reach the stick, okay? Be underneath the framework of our body, and he's coming out. Again, we want to come out flat to negative. He's coming out a little high right there, okay? Coming out a little high. Okay, good right here. Good. Fast feet. Fast feet, top of the route. On top of the route, I got to be violent twitch at the top of my route. You're trying to create that twitchiness, create those quick feet, okay, at the top of my route. Again, go drift. Good job. He's got a good drill going on here. And then he gets in and he, then he starts to drift right there. Just got to be cognizant of that, okay? Flash the head, not opposite. Come out flat. Trying to create magic feet right here, okay? So some of the ways we, we, we started, uh, again, applying, okay, you see it. All right, really nice job. Again, I told you you can create some double move opportunities. Again, magic feet, okay? Magic feet, okay? Boom, boom. Good job. Pound those feet in the dirt. Bam, bam, bam. Good right there, okay? It still maintains speed. What I like about double moves is not losing speed, okay? Not losing speed out of our cuts and double moves, okay? And this is a great job, okay? Again, we've done three cone drill, trying to create magic feet. Good job right there, creating separation. Nice job. All right? Okay, good look right here, okay? Again, this kind of ties back to our, our releases versus off catch. We're gonna run away from the break point, and then we're talking about 
making hard angle cuts and exploding out of our brake, okay? Just like we saw in that M drill, right? So he's working M drill right here. He's pushing vertical to that cone. Go as fast as you can, man. Don't slow down. Boom, stick, get out. That's a good job right there. He's trying his best right there to not, not lose explosion out of his cuts, okay? Good burst right there. Nice job. Good job protecting the ball at the end. Okay? Again, try, again, try and eliminate the chop. This is the kid we're trying to eliminate the chops with. Does, it, does a better job here. And again, the three cone drill, you can see one, two, three puts him in the dirt. Typically, it's taking him four to five, okay? But now, he's worked in drill where, again, you're giving him the freedom. Go, man. Quit taking choppies. Go. If you fail, you fail. It's okay. Who cares? Just go full speed and train your body to cut at full speed and be explosive out of the break, okay? And then... He's done the three cone drill to train those magic feet up, okay, over and over again to where, again, the, the faster those feet can get in the ground, okay, the less steps I got to take, okay? I can go one, two, three, and get out, okay? He does a great job, right? Gets to the top, one, two, three, okay? Nice job right there, okay? Really nice job. Good job not, not taking way too, too many chops. Again, explosion out of the cuts. Explosion out of the cuts is what we wanted. Push his vertical stick and watch the explosion out of the break. Pushes vertical stick, explodes out of the break. Good. He doesn't ooze out of it. Okay, he doesn't ooze out of it right there. He sticks and he accelerates, okay, through the catch. Very nice job of application. Okay. All right, another, another drill, all right, that we utilize, okay. Uh, we, we, one of the hardest things to me as a receiver's coach sometimes is to simulate making tough catches. Okay, it's, it's just hard to simulate. You can get the pad. You can bang when they catch the ball. You can do those type things. But one thing we found that, that we really, really liked and that, that really simulated making tough grabs, like that DB's draped all over you, is our towel catches, okay? So we'll get a towel, we'll attach from just around the elbow right here, and then we'll catch, we'll emphasize catching in different ways. So it might be lateral, it might be even like I'm high pointing the ball, it might be even a scoop catch with my pinkies together, it's below my waist, okay? It might be a, 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 a behind, I'm, I'm working lateral like on a dig, but I, the ball's still behind me. Okay, it might be that. We're gonna attach that towel, okay, to that elbow, and we're gonna get a hard game. And I tell this is a student manager. Usually, uh, I've got someone else throwing to him, and I'm usually doing the towel because I really want to yank it hard. You're just before that ball gets to that, gets to those hands. Okay, you want to pull, okay, as hard as you can to try to simulate a DB being draped all over you, swiping at you, pulling you, raking your your back, whatever it is, and, and you're getting pulled right there, making a tough grab. So this is one thing that I, I thought has been really good for us making tough catches. Okay, so you can see right there, again, we're just jogging in place. We're throwing a ball lateral again, trying to pull as hard as we can on that towel, on that elbow, okay? Now, when it's a, when it was a, we, we typically do this, uh, it started out as a focus point when we needed it, okay? Uh, making tough grab, I didn't feel like we were catching the ball well in traffic. So we started doing it in practice, but then one thing we started doing is, doing this after practice every day. This became our after practice everyday routine right here. And again, we want it to be hard. But again, we tell our guys all the time, don't fear failure, all right? You, you fail in the drill, don't look at it as, man, I'm terrible, whatever. Man, just keep playing, okay? Don't fear failure, okay? If, if you're failing, you're pushing yourself to the limit in any drills and you're failing at it, all right? And I think, I think that means that you're really working hard to get better at something. Okay, good, got, got it wrapped around the elbow, I'm working my hands. I'm working my arms, okay, pump my arms. Good, good catch right there, good. Try to pull and tug on that towel. Okay, pull, tug on that towel. And we're trying to make it clean. We want it to be clean, boom. Good right there. That's all we're doing, getting a good tug right there. We want it to be a clean catch. Sometimes if it's kind of, if it's kind of juggles and he catches it, I'll make him go again. Good, pull, really hard on that towel. You're trying to, again, and again, to, to me, you're, you're, you're talking about you see right there, again, he was jogging. Look, he was jogging real high. If he's in that position and you pull that towel, you're going to move his whole body. But then he gets low. It's a good job right there. Okay. Gets, gets his chest. Again, tips over his toes at the top of the route. Okay. Again, my, 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 I'm much more powerful in this position than I am in this position. Okay. So I've got a good, uh, my core is flexed now. I'm utilizing my core. I've got my tips over my toes. They pull, that, that, that towel goes to pull me. I'm not going to be pulled off balance. Okay. Not going to be pulled off balance. I say that, he pulls him off balance right there. He pulls his whole, and my man raises up and he almost pulls him to the ground right there. Okay, nice job, right? Much better job being under control there. Okay, so there, there are your towel catches, okay? So again, trying to simulate 
tough catches right here, okay? Because th th these things are going to happen to you. You're going to get your, your, your clock clean. This is Neil McLaurin, the, the guy we should, we've talked about a few times on here, okay? Playing in the slot right here, all right? Does a great job on just an inside route right here down the pipe, all right? Does a great job of, of again, making the grab, okay? He does, again, I don't blame him, to be honest with you. He, he kind of turns his, uh, you know, he, 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 he turns his eyes right here, all right? But he, he's got that guy all over him, so I don't blame him one bit for kind of peeking this. But great job of making a tough grab. He gets the ball to his tuck. Again, strong fingertips and brings it in tight, okay? Makes a heck of a play right there. Okay, heck of a play. Good, great job making a tough catch. You see, good, good shot of it on the butt shot right here. Okay, boom, great job. He concentrates on the catch. He sees that DB coming, gets it tucked. Okay, he knows he's going to take a shot. Okay, great job tucking that ball away. Get, gets the ball, and we say this all the time, and we'll talk about this um, on another session as well. When we catch the football, we want to catch snatch to our tuck always. And a great job catching and snatching to the tuck. Okay, and obviously a great job uh, running after the catch there as well. Okay, again. You never know what type of position as a receiver that you're going to end up having to catch a football in. Okay, it could be all, all types of just awkward positions. Okay, DBs will be draped all over you. Great look right here but of a true freshman. Okay, that's been doing these towel catches. Okay, for I think at this point he's been doing them for uh, probably about a solid uh, three months now because we we had him in the summer. Um, he was doing them and then and then he did them uh, for about a month after after fall camp. And then this is again. This is just a kind of an awkward angle. He's got the DB trait all over him. Hands are all on him. It's like that towel right now is all across, okay? He's got a towel there. He's got a towel there, all right? And it's all across, and he makes a spectacular grab, okay, right there. All right, great job, okay, making a tough catch, okay? All right, so usually on our focus points, some form or fashion, we're going to have some type of perimeter blocking, okay? Uh, that's Again, that's always a focal point for us because the number one job description in our room is the block. Okay, so this is one that I felt like we were uh, a technique that we were very poor at, okay, the week before. So we wanted to emphasize it as a focus point the, the next week. So this is what we call run the number, okay. So as we, as we get in a blocking position, hands inside, okay, we're sitting in the chair, all right, and we're going to talk more about our, our perimeter blocking technique in, in another session. But as we're sitting in that chair and we're shooting our hands inside, we got our thumbs up, okay, and that ball carrier, okay, ends up getting outside. It's, it's usually when we're blocking for some type of outside run, okay? When we when that ball carrier starts to get outside and that, that defender goes to get that ball carrier and he starts to slowly break away from me, right? He gets a little, he gets a little bit of, heads, of a head start and st I start to feel that I'm losing the battle, okay? This is when you apply this technique. And we were getting called for holding calls because we weren't understanding when we were losing the battle on the perimeter, okay? And we were continuing to hold like this. Well, anytime on the perimeter that we're blocking, okay, and we extend our hands like this, we're going to get called for a holding call, okay? And there's, to me, blocking is about a mentality, yes. It's about tenacity. It's about, you know, having a mindset. But you got to put technique with it, too. I'm a believer in that. There's an art to it on the perimeter, okay? And this, this guy right here, Tim Jones, one of our best blockers on the perimeter, gets after it, hands inside. Now we're going to utilize what we call run the number technique. So when that DB or that defender, he goes, okay, outside, and we feel like the battle's beginning to be lost, okay, we are going to run to the outside jersey number, okay, of that defender to give the ball carrier a cut, okay. So I've got my hands inside. I'm running my feet on contact. That, that defender goes to slip away as opposed to me playing with my hands. We're going to play with our feet, and we're going to slice, okay, and run to his outside number, okay, in order to give the running back a cut. Okay, so you see right here, Tim's engaged. I go run the number. He rips through, okay. Now that running back at least, okay, has a cut back, all right, at the very least right there, okay. But we don't want to get called for a holding call. Okay, so we're working with the slot receiver. We just divide the groups up. You can see our GA is working down there. Again, good job. We just want to work the rip through. Rip through. Good. Right there. That's it, okay? Good. You're just working to that outside number right there. Okay, you just get in that guy's way. Okay, rip, rip that number. Okay, now working with the outside receivers, okay? 
Now, one thing with the outside, so that was with the slots, okay? Work it, run them over. Now, we're going to work the same drill, okay? Now, this particular week, okay, we were, we, were, we were working run the number drill, but this particular week we were playing a team that liked to trap their corners a lot, and it caused some issues with our perimeter screen game. Okay, We wanted to make sure that we solidified that trap because that could really screw up a lot of screen game that we like to do. So we wanted to make sure we were protecting against that trap. So you're going to see us take a hard step inside to go protect against a trap technique, Okay, and then we're also going to run the number once we make that block. Okay, So you can see good step right here, great first step. He gets off the ball. Okay, and he's protecting against that inside fight, okay, that inside trap, bang, he's on me. Now I go to try to defeat the block. I'm a trap corner, I'm trying to defeat that block right there, and I'm trying to get to that ball carry. He's running the number, okay, inside right there. Nice job. Okay, protect inside right here, outside receiver, boom. Protect inside, run the number, okay. Same deal up top, okay, so again, protecting against the trap corner, okay, same week of practice. Okay, just different day. You can see right here, okay? Great stance by my man right here. Great stance. Okay, he's low, compact, great step. He's working and then run that number right there. Okay, run that number all the way through. Okay, nice job. Okay. All right, good job protecting against the spike. Boom, right there, okay? Now I try to defeat, good, now I try to defeat him. Now here's the, here's the thing, we, we started mixing up. So we didn't always want to just give him, and, and this is, uh, I believe, on a Wednesday. So this is, we've already done the drill. We worked against trap, trap, trap. Now we didn't want to give him trap every time. We wanted to give him, hey, maybe a quarter's look as well. So we're protecting inside, but now all of a sudden, I don't spike, you got to come get on me, and then heck, I might try to defeat you outside. So again, see right there, I'm trying to defeat outside, you can't guess, can't fall asleep and guess. All right, you got to feel, okay, where that where that DB is trying to defeat you at. And again, you got to be cognizant as well of where what what type of run is it—an inside run or an outside run? Okay, that that's key for us. And we, you know, a receiver, we could care less about you know if it's GT, if it's power, one back power, whatever it is. I, li I like to tell my guys that stuff because I'm kind of a ball junkie, and I like to tell those guys that hey, you know, this is split zone, this is that. And some guys, you know, they like to know that stuff. Other guys can care less. They just want to know inside run or outside run. So if it's an inside run or outside run, that's going to also dictate, okay, where I run that number two. In this drill, we were solely just working, okay, running the number to the side I'm trying to defeat the block to. Okay, so again, can't get caught guessing right there. Okay, can't get caught guessing. Okay. All right, here we go again. Okay, we're gonna trap, gonna play good, playing trap, he's gotta go. Okay, playing trap, he's gotta go right now, bang. Okay, run the number inside, good. That's it, if we're running a bubble screen right here, okay, let's just say we got a slot, running a bubble, I'm spiking to try to take that bubble away, bang. He's cut me off, and then he's gonna run that number inside. Now look at the leverage we've created, okay, to circle the defense right there. Okay, nice job. All right, slot receivers, okay, bringing them in the party, okay. Again, working inside, outside run, mainly outside run for those guys right here running the number. Okay, to the outside edge right there. Okay, good. Ripping through, same drill right there. Okay, now we, we, we worked with the outside guys. Now we're just working with the inside guys. Okay, outside, good. Run the number. Now, again, we're going to rip that left arm through. We don't just run and grab, okay? Don't run and grab. When you get to that point where you know you're losing the war, you're losing the war, you're losing the war, okay, you want to rip through as hard as you can and run to his outside number. Again, that's why we call it run the number. Okay, you're going to see a good clip of it right here, okay? This is uh, Trevor Terry right here, okay? Again, a couple things right here. We don't have a great face. Again, we talked about day one with our stance. If we've got a press corner in our face, we want to tighten that back leg up, okay? So we want to tighten this back leg up right here, all right? And you can see it takes us so long, okay, to even think about getting that foot forward right there. That DB's already on. He's already all over us, okay? Because our foot is so far back, we couldn't even take a step right there. Now, second thing, look at his hands. You, again, you got press right here. I know we're playing the drill. We're, we're doing a, a W drill right here where we're, we're, we're physical first day of pads, you know, and all that stuff. That's great. But still right here, put your hands up. Now, don't have your hands down, down, down here, all right? And that, that you just expose your whole chest. Get your hands up to your chest, just like we talked about in our stance day one, okay? But again, what he does right here is he runs the number. He's got in a bad position, okay? He's getting beat right now. He's got a terrible base. But again, again, we tell our guys, Major effort corrects minor mistakes. Don't ever give up on a play, ever. Okay, major effort corrects minor mistakes. 
and we're giving major effort. And then right here, Trevor knows, he knows right here he's in trouble. Okay. So he knows right now the only chance I got to even help my, my running back, the ball carrier, is to run the number and try to give him a cut. Okay. So watch it right here. We'll take it from the top. Okay. We get to that position. We go run the number. Okay. Great job. Right there. That's it. Again, you can see him right there. He's trying to reach to get to that far side number. Now, technique wise, I would love for him to rip that left arm through. Okay. Right there and run it all the way through. But again, he's trying to reach the, the, the number six on the front of his jersey right here. Okay. He's trying to reach that, 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 that number. Okay. Out here, the outside number. Reach it, and then again, he's pinning his guy. It gives ourselves a chance to get great effort right there. Phenomenal effort. Great job not giving up on it. Trying to trying to run that number right there. Okay. All right. Look at it up top. Okay. Now, I'd like to come off the ball a little harder right here. Obviously. Okay. I want to I want to use my speed. This is a speed guy. Okay. Up top. All right. I'm a speed guy. I want to use. Use my speed, okay, to my advantage right here. I'd like to get off this ball. Do not let them know that it's run, okay? Now, again, the DB's backing up, but still, I, I think we're giving it away just a little bit right there. All right, now, as we're pushing vertical, okay, we sit in the chair, okay? We utilize it again. We'll talk about this in another session, but as we get within four yards of that DB, we're going to utilize our creep technique to break down, okay? We're going to sit in that chair, okay? So, sit in that chair, low pad is now, boom, okay? We're engaged, all right? We feel right now, we know this is an outside run, Okay, and we start to feel, okay, right here, all right? We feel that the battle's being lost, okay, outside, all right? Now, we're hoping in this instance the running back would be able to cut back, but you never know, okay? So, we feel that battle's being lost. So, we start, you see right there, Quest starts working out. Technique-wise, I'm not, I'm not happy about it, all right? But effort-wise, okay, for the technique, I'm happy about it because he's trying to get to that outside number. You can see. Right here, he's trying to work that outside number. What he needs to do is rip through as hard as he can, okay, right there. That's going to get that DB shoulders turned, all right, as we're ripping through to that outside number. Now the back makes a cut, okay. But oh, but, but regardless, though, great effort and great attempt to try to work. You see him right there. He's working it. He's not sitting there, okay, just doing this. He's trying to play with his feet and try to run that number, and it gives the running back just a little cut right there to get the first down. Okay, it's a good job. Okay. Uh, another drill, okay, that we utilize okay, for our focus points, all right? So, again, the application here, we, a reaction drill. So, in a lot of our, uh, in, in, in our offense, okay, we, we believe in, in reading a lot of routes, okay? We don't believe in a lot of times just running routes straight up and down and program routes. A lot of times we're reading stuff. So, I felt like the week before we were really bad at making decisions, whether it was uh, you know, four verticals play or some, some type of play where we had to make some type of read, I didn't feel like we were being decisive. So, um, with quarterbacks, it was really easy when I used to coach quarterbacks, training the mind and giving those guys a lot to think about as they drop back in the pocket where you were flashing either numbers at them or you were giving them commands and they had to react. You know, some type of reaction drill I wanted to find for the receivers. So we call this reaction drill. Simple as that. So we got everybody in line working a great stand. And this whole thing, we're still working all of our fundamentals, guys. Still working stance, still working flashing the head nod, all that, all that top of the route stuff. But the emphasis of the drill is the middle part, okay? We want them to have to react to my commands, okay? So, again, it's no different than they're in, a, they're in a game and they're having to react to the DB playing on top, playing low, and they're having to make adjustments, okay? So we're creating that reaction drill. So right here, okay, as soon as I move my foot, bang, we're off, we're, we're, we're sprinting, okay? As soon as I start to point my hand, okay, these guys are going to have to stick, flash the head nod, stick, flash the head nod. Okay, if I point to the ground, okay, they're going to open their hips. Okay, we're going to flash up. We're going to flip our hips as fast as possible to me. Boom, flip your hips. Good job right here. Flip your hips. Flip your hips. Okay, good right there. Now, I'm going to start to give them routes, okay? So now, I'm going to tell them to, I, they all got commands. They're all hand commands, and I'm verbalizing it as well. Okay, I'll say accelerate. Okay, so they've got to take the slack up. I'll say decelerate. I'll say out, in, vertical, post, Curl. I'll say all that. Like they got to remember, they, 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 they don't know what I'm going to say. They've got to react to all that, okay? So right here, okay, we're saying accelerate, decelerate, okay, vertical. Okay, good. Run a go route. All right, right there. All right? So, again, you're, you're getting, okay, you're trying to create different types of reactions, okay, for those guys. Again, this is really more about the middle than it is anything else, okay? Those guys, especially in your offense, if you do a lot of 
uh, a lot of reads with your wide receivers, okay? If you're reading stuff, okay, I think it's really good to try to create some type of reaction drill, okay, some type of drill to where they've got to they've got to read you, all right? They've got to learn the process, okay, uh, on the fly. So we're just trying to get these guys to to process on the run right here, okay? So Peter Hyde, okay, boom, flash the head nod, boom, flash the head nod, flash the head nod, okay? Hips, 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 okay? Accelerate, okay? Decelerate. Okay, break out. Good, right there. Okay, so again, give them different, give them different routes. Okay, all right, as you're working. Okay, really nice job again, right here. Great adjustment. Okay, so again, he's got, you know, he, he he's got a, a a really good adjustment to get back on track. Okay, he's gonna run an out route now. He's a young freshman right here. He's uh he's wrong, uh, stemming away. He's stemming to the break point of the route. But what he does though, okay, he does a good job of adjusting on the fly and reacting to what the what the what the defender did. Okay. So he gets back on track. He lets that defender get back in. Okay. He uses uses his uh head nod right here at the top, shakes it, okay, and comes back flat. Okay. And uh, again, make you're trying to put your guys in a position with that reaction drill to make adjustments on the fly. Okay. Good job right there, making an adjustment and living with it. Okay. All right, now some some of these routes we're reading. Okay, so right here, okay, again, try to make a decision off leverage, all right, Feel it, feeling that leverage, let, letting, that, letting that top guy clear, and then we got to feel leverage right here. Anytime that we got a lot of, especially, especially got a lot of option routes in the game plan, a lot of things like that, we're going to work that reaction drill, okay? Again, just to get those guys, okay, again, reacting to different, to different commands. Okay. So any any type of route reading stuff, okay, we're, we're gonna make sure that we get that reaction drill, get those guys used to breaking off something, okay? So good, okay. All right, so right here, okay. Again, he's he's working a, he's working an option route, okay. So he's working off leverage, okay. Sit the grass, he can break right, he can break left, okay. Really nice job, and good job with the hard angle cut on the slant route, right there. But again, we want to be right when we read it. Want to be on the same page as our quarterback, okay. Up top. Okay, up top right here, okay, reading this corner, okay, good decision. Okay, on top stop, good job coming down the stem right there, okay. He's pushing vertical, and again, good good clip right here, top of the route. He's pushing vertical, low pads, okay, sticks, comes down the stem, boom. Okay, nice job right there. Okay, again, he's reading it. We, we, we were very poor the week before at reading our routes, okay, re reading the, the conversions, and, and we did a good job, okay, as we went forward, okay, as we started to implement and emphasize, okay, uh, those, those, those reaction drills, okay? Sloppy stick right here, but a good read nonetheless, okay? Sloppy stick right here, we like, again, again, we're way too high. We want to stick, okay? Open up reach and come back down that stem right there. Not a great job sticking. We get a completion here, but again, good decision nonetheless. Technique is bad, fundamentals are bad, but the read is correct, okay? The read is correct. Okay, good job reading that DB. So I hope that gives you guys some insight of, of how we're going to utilize those focus points, okay, and why we're going to use them, uh, and why we're going to use those drills to address those focus points. So whatever focus points you come up with each week for your receivers, okay, whether it be blocking, route running, catching, whatever it is, all right, make sure that you have the indie drills that you want already prepared, you know, on, I usually do that on a, on a Sunday or a Monday, uh, usually Sunday night for me when, when, I, when we go through those indie drills, Okay, and we want to make sure that they address those certain needs uh, and those areas of focus for the week. So make sure you got an indie plan that addresses those focus points so you guys can continue to get better week to week. Appreciate you guys' time and look forward to seeing you next time.